Want to give a little bit of an update on how the van project's going. I haven't been doing a lot of freeze dry videos right now. I have a couple of them that I've half edited, but I haven't really worked on that because I've been feeling up to working on the van, so I've been doing that instead. I keep videotaping stuff, but I haven't actually finished editing anything. So I wanted to give a quick look at how far this has gotten. And then later in the real video, I'll show how we got there and some of the changes that have been made already, uh, at least with the thought process. So let's take a quick look at it. So we've got kind of a couch piece that's in there with all of our storage or a bunch of storage under it and don't have any hatches into those spaces yet so we can't actually get things in and out and haven't figured out exactly how we're doing the back portions yet either but I'm not really worried about that because we have ideas. So this part is 10 inches tall and we'll have at least two layers of the cushion because the cushions are going to be the sleeping mat area and we'll make it in sections that can be folded so there'd be at least two layers here so we'd have one piece here then come up the fold the second piece and then the third piece along here and maybe a little flip over for a head bolster area so I'm not real sure yet because we haven't gotten that far haven't figured out exactly how we're attaching these to this uh, or exactly how far back they'll be but if I can get it about here and put good cushion on this it feels pretty comfortable right now on this side the driver's seat does not go as further forward as the passenger seat nor does it angle as far as far forward um, but then my son said you know you've bolted this to the the seat trolley area you can always slide this back uh, and that's a hundred percent right so we may just slide this back three or four inches which gives us the tilt that we need and we wouldn't even have to move the seats as much and that still leaves all the open space to get out in and out of both doors We've got huge leg room which is one of the things we want we want this space to stay very very open uh, so that it's comfortable with a nice space in here so the thought process is we could be sitting on one side, kind of move over to the side and we could flip the first side down and then this portion drops in and then the cushion could be put on there. We'll probably have a fold up head piece up here to add a few more inches up on that end. We can move over to this side and then fold this side down. So that gives us the whole bed area and two sides and then we're going to look at how can we widen the shoulder area up here we're already planning on some kind of armrest area box at this end and we're thinking we could make that in a couple of pieces similar to this so that then we add another wider area in the whole shoulder area so that gives us a huge space in there right here at the end of the foot area and one side can be considerably shorter than the other one side only needs to be about five three the other side needs to be about six foot so we're planning on this storage cabinet area or shelves or cubbies on one side and so this right now our model is about 10 inches deep 20 inches wide and about 40 inches or 43 inches tall so a really nice amount of storage and we'll make it so that it can fold or be removed the top foot and a half that way it can be taken down for driving so we can see over the top of that and out the back window okay and then that portion here extends past the removable portions to give extra foot space at that end now let's go to the back and see it from the back so far from the back here's our model of that storage unit and all of the sleeping areas and then we step down into the giant well area that uh, is formed by removing those third row seats and i'll be putting a link to bruce parks video on how to remove that he did an excellent job showing how to remove those 
Uh, very happy to see that because one of the nice things he said is, don't worry, you're going to break the clips. So this is our plan currently. We've got our little portable toilet here. Uh, that's the basis or beginning of the wall alongside that. We'll add a curtain or wall on this portion that's movable. And then our refrigeration or cooler, whatever we end up with. And right now it's sitting up on a platform. We want this ultimately to be able to be turned. So maybe some kind of turntable, locking turntable, so that if we're stuck inside, either it's late at night or the weather's bad, we can face it that way. If it's nice out and we want to be outside, we could spin it this way. <laughs> and then we could be here on the outside and utilize it. So that's kind of the thought on that, is that it could go either of those directions, in, depending on what we need. And at this point, we don't know if we're going to use a cooler or a actual refrigerator, but that's not really important right now. And I'm sure we'll start with a cooler at first um, because we'll have mostly freeze dried food. I mean, if you imagine this whole storage unit filled with freeze dried food, that would be a lot of food. And of course, if we do go with just simply an ice chest kind of thing, it would probably be laying down at this angle and then it wouldn't have to rotate. Um, kind of assuming that I would end up using more like a dorm room mini fridge with the refrigerator and freezer units uh, because they're inexpensive and they don't take a lot of power to operate. Uh, my kids have a couple of them and they only take about 50 watts uh, on a normal basis to run. So you could run that all day pretty inexpensively as far as power usage. Um, and putting it this way, at least this size ice chest encroaches on the foot room over here. That doesn't mean we wouldn't build our own or have a different shape, but ultimately we're kind of looking at what's going to fit this space, what's going to fit our use. An ice chest or a chest kind of refrigerator or freezer, of course, is more efficient because cold sinks and when you open this, it doesn't pour out all the cold air and replace with warm air like it would if it were standing up. But that's for the future. So now, continuing on. This whole base is going to end up with a floor in it. So we're going to add some strips of wood in here to get it level, uh, even, and then we'll just sheathe it with a piece all the way across here and then put a waterproof tray kind of thing in there. So if anything from either of these spills, it's contained. We'll leave this space completely open. We can walk straight through from the outside to the inside or vice versa. And so you can see when we have the couch area, uh, we've got quite a space in there. We've got a free space in here of about four foot deep. And then this steps down into here uh, about 10 inches. Where this little pink bin is right now, of course, will end up all the way across with a giant storage unit underneath here. And that could be for water, batteries, supplies, whatever we need back here. I, I don't really know where things are going yet. So that's how it's going so far. Uh, for me, it's going pretty well. It's going at a decent pace, though it's still pretty slow. But this is taking up the time, so I'm not really doing the freeze-dry videos right now. Though, as I said, I've got a couple of them in progress right now and I kind of edit those when I don't feel up to actually physically working on this. As long as I'm feeling good to work on this, I'll probably work on this as my first priority and the other stuff will be secondary. I still make sure I read all the comments every day. So if you have questions, comments, ideas, let me know. I'll get to those uh, before I get to this usually or late at night. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more of this if you're interested in this.